Hi everyone, welcome to episode 32 of the Young Flex podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a podcast mainly about knitting, but also sometimes when I can, all different kinds of fabric crafts. Welcome to any new viewer. Thank you so much to everybody who joined in the past couple of weeks. Um, it's very nice to have you. I hope you enjoy the episode and yeah, thank you and welcome. Today is going to be very blue. It is quite gloomy here today in the southwest of France where I live. So yeah, we gotta do with what we have. Um, I feel like I don't have much to show you uh, this week, but I do have some progress and one new project to share and yeah, some some spinning related topic uh, at the end of the episode. Timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast are in the description down below, so if you want to skip anything, feel free to jump there. You will also find links to everything that I talk about as well as my social media and my Etsy shop. And I just wanted to quickly mention that I have a 15% uh, of uh, coupon code uh, running for the end of the year and a little bit into January. Um, so yeah, it works on the hand-dyed uh, sock yarns and all the weaving stuff. Uh, should you care to have a look? Christmas gifts, stuff like that. So yes, I feel like we can start. I have one finished object to share with you and they're on blockers, which makes zero sense. Uh, but these are a new design um, that I'm going to release soon. Um, I wanted to take pictures today, but there's no light, so <laughs> I can't. I hope I will have them released like this weekend, um, but I'll see. Um, these are the card sock. So it's a new design and it has this center panel with this leaf motif. So yeah. Keep your eyes open. Uh, this will be on Ravelry, like I said, when I get some pictures done. But yeah, I got the pair and the yarn that I use is Tuku Wool uh, Fingering, which is 100% finished wool and it's so perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. This is the Ujo, Uyo, Ujo, I don't know. I don't, I did try to learn Finnish um, like 10 years ago. Oh my god, 10 years ago I was 15. <laughs> you know when? You can feel old at 25. Um, I did try to learn Finnish. Um, I stopped because I, I had a little book, you know, and the page numbers, so there was the page number, and then the number was written in full letter next to it. And I stopped when I noticed that the page number I was in uh, had to be written in such tiny letter because apparently when you want to say 143 in Finnish, you need about a meter. Um, so yeah, so I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's the 28 uh, Ujo colorway. And it's this beautiful brownish mauve pink. And it's a really rustic-y feeling wool. And I just love it. It has a little halo, as you can see. And it just gives this really soft um, home cozy feeling to the stitch um, which will look absolutely beautiful if you use a yarn that's a high twist you know which is primarily what you should use but I just thought that it could work and my did um, it totally gives the feeling I was going for uh, like really cozy home house socks wintery feeling and yeah there's it's a simple design they're quite minimalistic but they're just 
Yeah. Yeah. I like them a lot. <laughs> so, did I even say the name? These are the Corde Sock. I explained in last episode what the name is all about. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully they will be on Ravelry uh, soon. So, I hope you like them. I would like to hear what you think about the design and yeah I would love it if you'd have a look at it when it's out. The second project I want to talk about um, it's completely ridiculous I should have that done really um, but if I didn't film now I was never going to film I would have been late in my day um, because I'm on the toe yeah, I'm the podcaster that shows socks that just needs like 10 minutes in the tank to be done. But yeah, these are some socks I'm knitting for my mom as a Christmas uh, gift. Uh, they are knit out of Drops Fable print. Um, and it's a colorway that I really, really love. It's just I, I like the colors. I like I like the self patterning thing, and I really like these colors. So I made um, short socks because I already made her another pair that was quite long. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna make them one long, one short, and then she can say whichever she prefers, and uh, we'll only make them the ones she prefer uh, in the future. But yeah, and that way. I will definitely have enough left to make myself a pair, <laughs> which really is the main point of it. I used um, Simple Cream, um, which is uh, my own uh, wool sock base, uh, which is 75-25 wool nylon um, as a contrast, and I made a German short row heel, and I'm making a round toe. I knit them two at a time. Um, it was my first time making two at a time socks and I did not quite like it. I thought I would enjoy it more than I did. So I don't know if I'll ever do that again. Um, yeah, it just goes too slow. Um, I mean, it, it's completely a psychological thing because psychological thing, yeah, you, you understand what I mean. Um, because I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna have the pair done uh, but it's just they felt like they didn't progress much and like, I made a really short leg so if I would have made a longer leg that wouldn't have kept me motivated whereas if I knit one sock and can go really fast and get one sock done in half a day I don't know that feels more satisfying to me but then I have to need the second one. But I don't have a problem with the second sock thingy. Um, I do tend to knit the second sock much faster than the first one just because I want to get it done and do something else. But I always do it. Um, we'll see if that changes. But yeah, I'm glad that I tried it. I'm getting all tangled, but yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that I tried it. And yeah, I really like the colorway. These will obviously be done 10 minutes after I finish filming. The camera is tilting. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm fighting with my tripod. It keeps popping out the phone and it's annoying. I don't know why it's so difficult for a tripod to just to sit straight. Okay, I gave up and <laughs> balanced my phone against books and yeah, because the phone keeps popping out of the tripod and I don't want it to uh, fall on the ground and break. So that's how we're gonna do now. <laughs> um, I have worked obviously on my pavement sweater. I'm not going to show it to you because I'm still on the body. Um, it's going quite fast because it's worked at a rather loose gauge, so it's pretty fun. And I, I think that next week I might, um, I might have some sleep started. We will see. 
I have a new cast on to share with you and um, if you remember last time I wasn't sure whether I should start the boho blush show or the aura show and so I decided for the boho blush which is a pattern by Andrea Maori and yes so and it, it's a crescent shape uh, I think <laughs> It's the shape that's impossible to show while it's on the needles. Um, but I'm still going to try. This is what I have so far. I've worked quite a bit on it. So I am using uh, some merino bamboo that I hand dyed myself in a color that is uh, not showing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a kind of brownish uh, beige pink. Thingy. Uh, yeah, and I'm alternating because I have, um, if you remember, I have three very different colored skin. So I decided that for the main parts of the show, which is the garter sections, I will alternate my two darker section and use um, this very light one for the brioche and. I've done one brioche section and I think it doesn't look quite bad. You can actually not really notice that it's significantly lighter than... Um, I'm sorry, it's not... Okay, I should just <laughs> stand back. Yeah, you can notice that it's a lighter band, but it looks cohesive and I like that. So yeah, it's a short... You start with the garter tab on, which I don't like. I have problem with the edge of the show. Yeah, you see how that looks? I just don't think it looks good. It looks a bit wonky and I'm trying very hard to keep it stretchy, but it's not very stretchy. So I hope I'm not gonna have a problem with the shape of it when I'm going to block it. And that it's going to make it look a little bit better because right now I really don't like how it looks. Um, but that's how it's supposed to work, so, okay. It, it it doesn't matter because when you're wearing the show, you don't really see the edge, so. It's fine. I like the textures inside. So it's basically a garter, brioche. Look at that brioche. Spoing, spoing. And... A lace section, which I just done the first lace section. Let me see if I can show that to you. No. It shows uh, It shows better in real life than what it does on the screen. Because on the screen it looks like the variegated yarns makes it uh, very messy. But you actually see it better in real life when I stretch it. Yeah. It's like a fan effect lace. It's really pretty. Um, it's easy to work uh, except you have to count. So um, there's uh, the first row of the lace you really need to count. So I just did that <laughs> and nothing else um, while I was doing these rows. Um, but yeah, now I'm on another garter section and I forgot that I liked brioche that much. Um, I haven't done it in a long time. I did um, a two-color brioche cowl a while ago. And um, yeah, it's my first time doing one-color brioche. And I actually think I like working it better. Because you're not messing around with two strands. So that's really nice. And... Um, I just messed up the stitch count during the brioche section because when you reach the edge, I wasn't too sure when I was supposed to start the border stitches. Um, it says repeat the brioche thing until the last seven stitches, I think. Do I count the yarn overs of the brioche as a stitch? Do I not? So it just took a little while for me to figure out um, where I should uh, start doing the edge stitches and the increase. 
So I, I ended up the brioche sections, I was missing two stitches. So I just, I just did them <laughs> uh, in the garter, in the beginning of the second garter section. And now my stitch count is good. Um, I definitely think it's a show where it's uh, good to actually make sure you're right on stitch count. So, stupid hair. So, uh, the thing is, when I'm gonna have about 400 stitches on the needles, I'm gonna have to count them. It's going to be a bit. I have 230 stitches right now, and it's already not so fun to count, but I guess. You gotta do what you gotta do, and I really like how my colors are working. Like I said, the lace is showing better in real life. Why does everything look so grey? I mean, I love grey-blue, but I would appreciate if it wouldn't make all my warm colored yarn look horrible. Um, it will be better next week. I hope. It, no, it won't. It's the winter. It's just going to get worse and worse until spring. Um, yeah, putting hair everywhere, everywhere. So yeah, I I, I want to work on it now. I want to go past that brioche, um, that brioche, that garter section, get into the second brioche and see if I can make it without messing up the stitch count this time. But yeah. The Boho blush, and it has fringe, so um, I'll, I definitely I'm not looking forward to making the fringe because it's not uh, for my saturation. It was kind of a uh, kind of um, hassle, is the word. Um, so yeah, um, but this is definitely more a bohemian loose kind of thin kind of range so I think I'll be better with it <laughs> um words but yeah so that is all I've been working on this week um yeah I'm gonna have a, like a 20 minutes episode every time I say that but my episodes don't end up being that short so We'll see. I wanted to finish this episode with a little um, spinning talk. Um, so you know I spin on spindles. I don't have a spinning wheel. I want to have one. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's a pricey thing. Um, so I... I love spinning on spindles and I think that if I would have a spinning wheel I would still spin on my spindles but the problem is um, my arm and shoulder and elbow don't like it um, I get pain really easily when I spin for uh, a substantial amount of time on the spindle and I guess that's normal I'm not sure spindles are meant to be spun on for a long time. Maybe if you're sitting and doing it in a certain way. Um, but yeah, it's just that I can't spin as much as I would like to because I get hurt. So, yesterday I saw on Reddit that the creator of the electric eel wheels um, started a new Kickstarter. So if you don't know what that is, the electric eel wheel is an electrical uh, spinning wheel that is made by uh, an engineer, it's called Maurice, um, from the US and he originally made one for his wife because she wanted to be able to spin as at a efficient rate, so to say. Uh, but the spinning wheels are um, really pricey and, you know, there's no... There's no meter range, you know, you can have a spindle for like less than, you can even find spindles for less than 10 euros, but then if you want a spinning wheel, the, the lowest I found is the Kromsky one and it's 300 euros. Okay. <laughs> um, 
And electrical uh, spinning wheels is even worse because uh, I only know of the Ashford e-spinner that's about 600 euros. And you know, if you're a produc production spinner, if you have the means for it, if you really need it, um, I understand the craftsman, the craftsmanship that goes with it. It's just that in my, I'm not in a position to get a spinning wheel, no matter how much use I would uh, get of it, because uh, I think I would actually need one, need one. But yeah, spinning wheels too pricey, blah blah. blah. Maurice, engineer, makes up a whole little cute. A very affordable electrical spinning wheel and he called it the electrical eel wheel and he's been doing a bunch of kickstarters there's a Ravelry group uh, for it if you want to have a look I'll link everything down below and I think he has now made five versions of this wheel and you know it's it's a simple thing uh, it has a motor it spins it's good <laughs> um, and it, it's functional and um, it is really affordable so if you are looking to invest in an electrical spinning wheel but you can't really afford uh, the big ones maybe you should have a look at him right now he doesn't have uh, the big electrical uh, spinning wheel available but he decided to make a mini one. So he intended it, uh, and it's all explained in his um, description video for it, he intended to make a spinning wheel that would be quite uh, um, uh, in between thing, between a spindle and a really big wheel. So it's a mini spinning wheel, electrical, and it's cute. And it's only $50. So, yeah, there is a Kickstarter going on for it. It just started, I think, like yesterday. I saw it on Reddit yesterday, so I think it only started now. And it's running for a month. And it's already, I like last time I checked, it was at 800% uh, crowdfunded uh, on Kickstarter. So, yeah, there is a big demand for affordable solution to be able to spin more efficiently than with a spindle and I think it's a great learning tool as well if you want to start spinning but you're a bit afraid of the spindle learning curve curve um, like I said in my case I love to spin on the spindle I am pretty efficient on it it's just that I get hurt uh, with it and there are things that I like I have a ton of alpaca that I would like to spin to knit a shawl that's the thing, as soon as I want to spin for a project and I need a consequent yardage, meterage, meterage, um, I, I, I can't, it just takes me forever. And if you remember, I have that red orange fi merino fiber on my Turkish spindle. I have it for like maybe six months and it's not moving because Every time I pick it up, I just, I just get pain in my elbow, all, all here, and it's just, eh, no. Plus, I've been working out lately, and I managed to do push-ups for the first time in my life, like real push-up. And I discovered that you have a muscle here, and it hurts. <laughs> so definitely, no drop spindling for me until that sore muscle gets sorted out. Tangent. Um, so when I saw this, you know, sure, it's not a production spinning wheel. If you're looking for a production spinning wheel, then this mini electrical eel wheel is not for you. Uh, it only has small bobbins. I think it's about 40 grams capacity. It's still a bit more than a spindle, uh, even though I, I, can, I can pack my spindles pretty well. And... You know, he it doesn't go as fast as it could, being electrical. But I don't need that, really. Um, I figured that this, this mini wheel could help me spin faster and get the same result as I do with my spindles, that is a 
if I'm spinning for a project, I'm going to have a lot of small skeins. But I'm just going to do it much faster and without the pain. So, uh -huh. so like I said, it's $50, 60 if you want three bobbins, which is what I took. And shipping overseas, because I'm in France from the US. And you know, that's always what's a bit with those kind of things um you know when you see something that's extremely affordable and then it's shipped from the US and it's like a hundred euros shipping and suddenly it's like uh, uh -huh, no um but it's only twenty dollars shipping from the states to the to France which is the normal uh, price that I pay even for yarn because it's such a lightweight um thing it's so teeny tiny they have a video and they had to uh, attach it to a book so that it had some weight so that's kind of cute um so yeah back to it i kind of hesitated a little bit i was like oh i really need to save money i don't want to do this and but i really do want to to back it um so yeah i backed it and i should get a mini spinning wheel, electrical spinning wheel, by June next year, which is my birthday. But considering how amazing his, his Kickstarter is doing, um, yeah, I don't know if he's going to be able to hold these delays. I believe he will, because he always had in his previous um, Kickstarter campaigns. But yeah, it's just, it's a lot. He's really successful with it. And I think that's brilliant because he's really filling in an empty spot in the in the fiber craft market so what i'm rambling about is that if you need a spinning wheel if you'd like an electrical spinning wheel to be faster to learn how to spin but you can't afford the big ones or you just want it for your child or you know you don't want to make such a big commitment and especially if you're in the united states Go have a look at this Kickstarter. Um, I just think, I just think it's it's really nice what he's doing, and I can't wait to see it for real and to play with it and yeah, to see how it works for me. Uh, but I definitely think that it's going to solve a problem in my craft life, and yeah, I can see myself making all the hand spun sock yarn so yeah um i think i'm going to get a lot of enjoyment out of it and i can't wait to share it with you i am so uneloquent uh i'm pretty sure i made zero sense during all that rant about that kickstarter but yeah um This is it for this week's episode. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little short wonky episode. Um, yeah, I have a lovely day, night, week, and I think I will see you next time, maybe on a different day, because I think next Wednesday we're going to go and see our future puppy i'm not sure but i think so i'm fighting really hard uh, for her to be named the way i want um it sounds so <laughs> it's just that i i, I do believe my name taste is much better than my sister's uh so yes <laughs> sounded so posh i want her to be called nessie like you know the Loch Ness Monster and I just think it's you but my sister prefers Nelly which is so I mean it's cute but it's so it feels so common so and peculiar it doesn't have that little you know she's gonna be a little Loch Ness Monster and uh, judging from the video that we get She's a little uh, cheeky bee. So, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I don't know when I'm filming next week, but I'll definitely have a podcast out with hopefully a little bit more crafty content for you. Uh, have a lovely day, night and week, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.